There has been a world untouched by human eyes until now. The ever-changing climate of downtown Los Santos houses some unique life, and the equally changing dynamics between these suburban creatures brings much insight into their daily routines. Lamar, the older male, attempts to enter the home of his younger counterpart Franklin, but when rejected, immediately shows his dismay at Franklin's lack of ability to both hunt and attract a suitable mate. Maybe you got rid of the old yee yee ass haircut you got, you get some bitches on your dick. Before letting out a howling roar as he departs. Nigga. It is important that Franklin, despite being the smaller male, maintain a strong front against Lamar's antics when trying to enter his home, as it houses his aunt, who would otherwise be left completely defenseless should Lamar sweet talk his way inside. What's up? Can a low come up in your auntie Denise with all that ass? For sure. Contract two, three, four. It is because of this fact that Franklin must take a defensive stance at all times, never letting his guard down no matter what antics Lamar, or anyone else for that matter, tries to pull. Should Franklin fail in protecting his home, he will in fact have to accept his place as the beta male, as the alpha will then reap the rewards of mating with his aunt Denise and all that ass. It is unfortunate that Franklin is held with such a large responsibility, being so young living in downtown Los Santos. It is good that he has been acquainted with Lamar, as any other stranger who wanted to enter his home might take a much more violent approach. And the lawyer she fucking with, nigga. Of course, death is just a part of life and the reality of the situation living here in Los Santos. Franklin should find himself lucky to be able to drive off Lamar, but nothing stops him from returning with a pack of his own. Even in the frigid cold of winter, when most of the other residents of the city would find themselves in a deep hibernetic state, Franklin must stay aware, ready for any antics that Lamar may pull in an effort to seek shelter within his home. Fucking with that brain surgeon, the lawyer she fucked with, nigga. What? While there may be less activity when the temperatures drop below freezing in Los Santos, true safety is never a reality for the Franklin Rostis family. A similar predator-prey relationship can be seen in a cousin species in Australia. Oh mate, don't aim me because I'm a fucking dupe mate. Maybe you got rid of that old fucking poof de haircut you got. You get some sheilas on your fucking cock. Or better yet, hey Denisha will call your shit cunt if she ever stops getting dick from that brain surgeon or lawyer she's fucking. You fucking dog cunt. What? India. Oh, can a low come up in your crib? Man, fuck you. I see you at work. and even in Japan. Some versions of Franklin have even evolved to live underwater where they face a similar dilemma. Oh my God, maybe if you got rid of that old PD as haircut, you'd get some bitches on your dick. Oh, better yet, maybe Denise will call your dove as if she stops fucking with that brain surgeon or lawyer she fucking with. Nigga, uh -huh. It's difficult to tell from the range at which our film crew had to capture this footage whether that was a real wild sponge that Franklin defended himself from or just a Lamar in a sponge costume, but nonetheless Nickelodeon was quick to capitalize on this new monetization opportunity, going so far as to even open a roller coaster in dedication to the symbiotic relationship of these two creatures. Oh, they don't hate me because I'm beautiful, nigga. Maybe you got rid of that old yee yee ass haircut you got, you get some bitches on your dick. Oh, better yet, maybe Tanisha call your dog ass and she ever stop fucking with that brain surgeon or lawyer she fucking with, nigga. 
Naturally, the roller coaster was a tremendous disaster. The opposite of a success. It was an unsuccess. Still not as bad as the TV show opportunity, though. I mean, I guess the first season wasn't too bad. Man, fuck you. I'll see you at work. Oh, nigga, don't hate me because I'm beautiful, nigga. Maybe you got rid of that old yee-yee-ass haircut you got, you get some bitches on your dick. The first season was fine. There was plenty of character development, a lot of good story points, but it felt like the writers got lazy around season 94. So here's the Black Mirror moment. We're not actually taking a look at a nature documentary. We're actually taking a look at the life and death of a meme. We're taking a look at the meme cycle, if you were. This meme has been so popular for so long that I went through not having COVID and then recovering from COVID and this meme is still the thing everybody's laughing at. And yet nobody can make them. You have to download so many different mods in order to be able to change the skins and the physics in the game. There's like, there's literally like seven dudes making this meme and that's it. And yet, as a result, we've gotten just as many examples out of this thing as one would expect, despite the fact that almost nobody's making them. They're hilarious in their own right. And it makes you ask a few questions, really, when you dissect this thing. One, how many times can you listen to someone say the N-word in a meme before you start to feel a little bit racist? What? Two, if Sonic makes fun of you for having sex with your girlfriend, do you really care? Because on one hand, it's like, yeah, someone had sex with your girlfriend. But on the other hand, it's like, it's Sonic. Like, he was obviously quick, probably, like, embarrassingly so. Like, I almost feel bad for him, really. What's up? Can a hedgehog dash into your crib? Man, fuck you. I'll see you at work. Oh, nigga, don't hate me because I'm the fastest thing alive. Maybe if you got rid of that egghead-ass haircut and got your rings up, he'll get some hose on your joystick. Oh, better yet, maybe at least call your slow ass. If she ever stops taking back shots from the blue blur, wait, that's me. You're too slow. What? Come on, step it up, Franklin. Oh. And three. Should the memes of production be held only in the hands of the elect few who can create high quality memes, do we suddenly become a communist society because the memes of production have been taken from the people? All right, I'm officially going on rants. Here's a version with me, an internet historian. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll catch you in a few days. Spisu. So what's up? Can I be on the next main channel video? Man, fuck you. I'll see you in the next collab. Ah, historian, don't hate me just because I love vending machines. Maybe if you got rid of that old man persona, you'd get some bitches on your dick. Or better yet, maybe Pyrocynical would give you a call back if you stopped killing every character in your ad reads like with Raid Shadow Legends. What?